welcome, welcome to Midday Moment. Welcome. I'm living this moment. Because of you, because of you. Because of you. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you. And praise you. And praise you too. Your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy has brought me through. Welcome to Midday Moment. Welcome. For you. It's midday moment. I'm living this welcome, moment. Welcome, welcome, welcome to midday moment. I greet you in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for joining me for this time of midday moments. Let me invite you to join me in a word of prayer. God, our Father, how we thank you afresh for another expression of your grace and your mercy toward us. Pray, O oh God, that you would bless our moments now together. May we, dear God, in some meaningful and marvelous way, deposit some truth, some principles to those who will hear and those who will encounter this teaching. Bless us now, we pray in your name. Amen. Today, my midday moments is entitled Peace, Peace of God. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, in the King James Bible, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted thee. The peace of God. You know, peace is not just something you wish for. It is something that you have to make. In reality, each of us have to make peace first with ourselves, with our failures, with our pain, with our past, and certainly with our God. And when we make this peace, we have to understand that peace is not the perfection of absence of conflict or chaos. Peace doesn't mean that you have no conflict, no chaos. Many times, peace is, or the, the peace that God gives us, it is a peace that he gives us in the presence of chaos, in the presence of conflict, but he gives us a contentment in order for us to either learn from the conflict, learn from the chaos, or live through it, or live with it. So we must always remember that peace doesn't mean that there is no conflict and no chaos, but it does mean that God will give you what you need so that you can manage and navigate the chaos and the conflict that may be in your life. So the first thing I want to say to you is that the peace of God is an enduring peace. It is a divine waiting peace. This peace that God gives us allows us to abide in the waiting room of life. There are seasons in all of our lives when we are in that waiting room. And when we're in that waiting room, we have to learn just be still and wait on God. But while we are waiting on God, we are waiting on God with the right attitude and the right spirit. In the waiting room of life, we are bathing ourselves in prayer. When we are waiting on God, we are bathing ourselves in prayer. We are, we are anchoring ourselves also to the promises of the word of God. We are, we are clinging, we are claiming the promises of God. Even though we may not have the promises right there with us and for us now, but we are believing that the promises of God will be coming. We're just not waiting, but we're also worshiping. We're not just waiting and worshiping, we are watching. We are expecting God to do something. We are serving, we are, we are doing what we ought to do until we get the breakthrough come. So this peace 
also that God gives us, it helps us to shoulder our burdens in a way that gives God glory. And also, it gives us a sense of confidence in knowing that we're not in this fight by ourselves. From life experiences, we've discovered that it's possible to have things happening externally that can be very confusing and conflicting. But then God can give you peace on the inside that helps you to become uh, unnerved or unglued by the external things of life. Peace does not mean that you are in a place where there is no noise, no trouble, no hard work. It means that you could be in the very midst of all of that and still have this internal and personal calmness of heart. I believe that we can reach this place of peace by having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is our peace. Remember what he says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, which tells me there is a peace that the world gives, but then there is a peace that he gives. And this peace that he gives us surpasses or transcends this idea of the world peace. This peace tells us that there is hope even when we are in the midst of hurts, in the midst of the heat of life, even when the life is weighing us down and the world seems to be crumbling all around us, this peace gives us the kind of peace that undergirds us when our foundation is crumbling, when we find that we are, there are cracks in our thoughts. It's a peace that says things may be rough, Things may be going bad. Things may be dismal and discouraging. Things may even be destructive. There is a God who will not abandon me. You and I can have this peace, this enduring peace, because we know that God doesn't abandon us. Another benefit of this peace is that you don't allow the behavior of others to destroy your inner peace. You see, God will give you the kind of peace that, that you don't allow the behavior of others to destroy your inner peace. You know that however others may be, in terms of how others may be chaotic and conflicting and argumentative, God will not allow the behavior of others to destroy your peace. Secondly, this peace is also give us what I would call an inwardly enduring peace and inwardly enduring peace. We're not sure of the outcome of, of certain things in life. We're not sure of always the results. So we have to just rest on the assurance that God's plan is always better than anything we could have planned. You remember what Job said? Job says, though he slays me, yet I'm going to trust him. And then Job says also that when he gets through with me, I'm going to come through just like gold. You see, Job says, I have something that's going to help me to endure. This is going to help me to endure what I'm going through. It's going to help me to endure. It's going to help me to have the assurance that God is going to be with me. So I want to remind you, secondly, that this peace is an enduring peace, but it's also an assuring peace. We don't know the outcome. We don't know the actual result of what things are going to be. But we do have the assurance that whatever it is, if it's God's will, God's plan is better than our plan. And ultimately, when God gets through with us, we're going to come out of this better. We have this enduring peace, but we also have this assuring peace. Another benefit of this peace is that this peace is permanent. We have the assurance that this peace is permanent. Permanent. This peace doesn't take a hiatus when we're in the throes of conflict. This peace doesn't leave us in the midst of trials and tribulation. This peace anchors us. This peace anchors us to the promises as well as the power of God. This peace reminds us that sometimes life may get a little turbulent. That life may be filled with trials and we may even sense or feel that if we are distant from God, but we have this assurance that God is with us. 
This peace doesn't eradicate. This, this peace allows uh, us to be assured that the promises of God will not evaporate or, or, or be eradicated as a result of the predicaments of the pressures that we're in. And so I say to you, as the Bible said, let the peace of God rule. That's, 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 that's the third thing I want to suggest to you, that the peace of God has authority. It has authoritative presence. Let the peace of God rule. That word rule in the New Testament means let the peace of God be the umpire, the referee of your life. You know, in a game of sports, there are always some umpires or referees. And they are there on the field to make sure that the game is done right. And the peace of God is that rule, that umpire. That peace of God is the, that which has the last word. I'm glad that God has the last word about my life and your life. I'm glad that God doesn't give the last word to the conflicts and to the chaos and to the, to the confusion that come against us. Uh, here again, Isaiah reminds us he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind stayed on him. Now remember, this perfect peace is not a peace where there is no absence, where there is the absence of conflict and chaos. This perfect peace can have chaos and conflict, but yet God will give you what you need to live through it. This peace is a peace that gives you, I have told you, enduring peace. It helps you to persevere, but it's not just enduring peace, it is also assuring peace. You can be sure that whatever you go through, when you come out of this, you're going to come out of this far better than you were. And this peace also is a ruling peace. It has authority. It has the last word. It's going to make sure that the game of life treats you as fair as it can because peace is going to be the ultimate decision. Well, I remind you again, let the peace of God rule. Remember, this peace is enduring peace. This peace is assuring peace. This peace is a ruling peace. Remember, he'll keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your mind focused on him. And I pray that you have a peace of God. I pray you're walking in this peace. It is a peace that helps you to endure. It's a peace that also gives you assurance. It's a peace that rules. the world. Salvation is free. I pray you have a blessed week. Peace and blessings be upon you. Thank you.